He has forgiven your sins. He has redeemed you. Now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Father, we worship you this morning. Indeed, Lord, we are grateful for such a time as this. That you've made us and allowed us to come in your presence. And to exalt you. To honor you. To lift our hands in adoration. To declare that there is no other God besides you. That you alone are God. That you alone are sovereign. That you alone are supreme. May you have your way in this place, O oh God. May you move as you wish. Like a flood, like a fire. With your power and with your love, O oh God. Do that which only you can do. Hey, we worship you, Jesus. Hands up, hearts open, wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open. Why does we cry? Lord, we lift your name high. Help me say, hands up, hearts open. Why does the sky? We lift you high. We lift you high. We lift you high. names fade away Ooh. let all the other names fade away till there's only you let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. 
names fade away. All the other names fade away. Till there's only you. Let all the other names fade away. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. This morning, come and take your place. Take your Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Moving on me right now. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Have your way in the worship. Have your way in the praise. sanctuary this morning have your way as we crown you now move in our midst touch us heal us revive us restore us let your hope abound in us one more time all hail the power of Jesus name hallelujah All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels pray. 
He has done marvelous deeds. Hallelujah. He is great. He is awesome. He is mighty. Take it away. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dance and praise Him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm gonna dance and praise him. I'm gonna dance and praise him. It doesn't matter what comes my way. The greater one, the greater one lives inside of me. Whoa, his name. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner. I'm born a winner.
are able. Great and mighty God, you are able. Jesus, you are able. You are able. Great and mighty God, you are able. And we worship you this morning because you are able. Oh, what a wonderful God you are. Everything we are belongs to you, Jesus. You are so great and greatly to be praised. Amazing God you are. Exceptional God you are. Hallelujah, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We strip ourselves of everything. That you may be exalted in our hearts this morning. You may be exalted in this sanctuary this morning. Oh God, we adore you. We adore you. You are wonderful, Jesus. There is none like you, O oh God. I could search for all eternity and find none like you, Jesus. You are so beautiful beyond description. You are marvelous in our eyes, O oh God. The treasure of our hearts. You are the air that we breathe. You are the song that we sing. Oh Jesus, we enthrone you in this place as we proclaim that you are king. As we worship, may you build your throne. As we worship, build your throne. Oh God, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We are so glad that we are in your presence. Just to pour our oil of worship before an amazing God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. You are great. And we say, Oh, in the Let my king, I don't know about you, be lifted high. Oh, oh, Anna, help me say.
your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With our hearts full of praise. With our hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be exalted, O oh Lord, my God. Hosanna in the heart. Exalt his name, exalt his name this morning in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up your name, oh God. Hosanna in the highest, oh Jehovah. Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna to the Lord of Lords and to the great I am and to the mighty one of Israel. Hosanna to the Lion of Judah. Hosanna to the King of Kings, oh God. We crown you holy. We crown you holy. We crown you mighty, oh God. Majesty you are. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lion of Judah. You are the great I am, oh God. The beginning and the end of Jehovah. All Find Omega who can be compared to you. You are an incomparable God. You are the great I am of God. Rebosian Torabosia. Riasian Terebozon Toraba. Riantaya Maziana Rabama. Take control over this service, oh God. Minister to your people, Jehovah. Riboyan Terebosian Tereba Conto. Riboyan Terebosian Tereba Zanda. We bless your name, oh God. God. We bless you, O oh God Almighty. We bless you, the great I am. We bless you, our Father. We bless you, our provider. We bless you, our sustainer, O oh God. Hakuna Mungu Kama Wewe Jehovah. We share Milele Jehovah. Tuna Kuaburu, Tuna Kuinua. Katika Jina La Yesu, O oh God. Ribosi Antaraba Zande. Ribosi Antaraba Zenda. You have been faithful, O oh God. You've been great throughout the week, my Father. You have taken our burdens, oh God. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Child of God, go ahead and just submit your knees to the Lord. Go ahead and just worship Him. Go ahead and just sub offer the supplications that you have come with in the house of the Lord in Jesus' name. It is not in vain to come to the house of the Lord. And the psalmist said that I was glad when I was told let us go to the house of the Lord because in the presence of the Lord there is victory in the name of Jesus. In the presence of the Lord there is healing in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and submit your request to the Lord. 
Makonta, Ashaka Yamakonto Yamazande. We bless your name, O oh God. We worship you, the great I am. Have your way in our lives, O oh God. We declare indeed the victory of the Lord is our portion in the name of Jesus. We declare the healing anointing of the Lord is our portion this day in the name of Jesus. Rebo Zenta Rabba Zenta Rabba Zanto. Rebo Konto Yabake Zekere Bayanda. Father, we bless your name, O oh God. Father, we speak life. This week, the Lord has reminded us that by his spirit, every dead situation comes to life. That by his spirit, anything that was not aligned to the spirit of the Lord starts aligning itself to the will and to the purposes of the Lord. Go ahead and just declare life to every situation. Declare life to your circumstances. Let the dry bones right now receive the resurrection power in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we declare life in our situation. We declare life to every dead situation. Katika jina la Yesu. Every circumstance says, oh God, oh my Father and my God, that has not aligned this soul to your will and to your purposes in our life. Right now we declare life. Rebo Torobo Zeka. Every dead situation in our life. Every dead situation in our family. Every dead situation in Valley Road. Every dead situation in this nation. We speak life and life in our Content for your destiny, content for your family. Anything that is contrary to the will and power of the Lord shall not see the day. Content for this nation. Remo konto ya bazande. Remo sianto robozia. Rima konto ya makonte rebazande. Father, we speak life to every situation. We speak life in the name of Jesus. Every dry bones right now. Receive the life of the Lord. We prophesy every situation. We prophesy in our life. We prophesy in our families. Oh God. Everything must align itself to the will and the purposes of the Lord. Every spirit of discouragement. Every spirit of oh God Almighty. Of mark timing. Of stagnation. Right now we declare to you. Come down in the name of Jesus. You are defeated in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name, O oh God. We worship your God Almighty. Have your way in our lives. Go ahead and tell the Lord to have your way, His way in your life. In the name of Jesus. In this season of revival, that you will be aligned to Him in Jesus' name. In this season of revival, that your family will not be left behind. In this season of revival, your business will not be left out in the name of Jesus. In this season of revival, you are an individual. You will connect to the power of God. You will connect to the spirit of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we surrender. Have your way, King of Kings. Have your way, O oh God. Let every situation bow. Let every sickness fly away. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let anything, oh God Almighty, that seems to be possible before our eyes, receive the possibilities of the Lord. Katika jina la Yesu, oh God. We worship you, oh God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings.
worship him with a clap of faris. Go ahead and celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. 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 The presence of the Lord is full in this house. May you receive his peace in Jesus' name. May you receive his peace in the name of Jesus. In every circumstance, in every situation. May you know that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And everything works for good in the name of Jesus. Give him a clap offering once again as you receive the peace of the Lord. Tell the enemy he is defeated in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of the Lord as we appreciate our worship team. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your great uh, ministry to us today. We are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good and all the time. And that is his nature. Amen. It's nice to see each and every one of you today. You look very nice in the blue masks. In Jesus' name. One day. We will see your faces in Jesus' name. Amen. The psalmist said, I was glad when I was told, let us go to the house of the Lord. You can never remain the same from the presence of the Lord. I pray for a shift in your life. I pray for transformation in your life in Jesus' name. Because that is what God has for each and every one of us as we come to his presence. So feel loved, feel appreciated in the presence of the Lord. The heavens know that you are here. Even if no one knows. So appreciate yourself for coming. Thank you. In this moment, I want to welcome those who are fellowshipping with us for their very first time. It's your first time to be at Sitam Valley Road. Anyone upstairs, did you come with friends and neighbors and relatives? Upstairs. Anyone, you want to stand where you are? Okay, let's try downstairs. Downstairs, did you come with people? relatives, loved ones. Eh, in this revival season, anyone? Anyone? I'm scanning around. Today we have no visitors. We will all go and take that tea. Amen? <laughs> if you didn't take tea in the morning, please, you are invited for a cup of tea after the service and we'll be glad to fellowship with you. Amen? If you've looked forward to fellowship with the people in blue jackets, what an opportunity. Everything works for good. Hallelujah. After the service, let's meet there. We will all take that tea in Jesus' name. Amen. So at this moment, I want to um, invite us to prepare our offering, even as we bring them to the house of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are grateful for yet another opportunity that you have given to us to come to your house, oh God. We thank you, dear Lord, for the blessings that you have given to us in this week, in this month. We don't take them for granted, oh God. We thank you because you give us many things that money cannot buy. Lord, as we give to your house the few uh, money that you have given to us, oh God, it's just a token of appreciation. And the much blessing that you have given to us, Lord, this is just a token of appreciation for your goodness and for your faithfulness. For what can we do without you, oh God? So receive them from our hearts. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Ashes, kindly wait on us. And before the notices, I want to let us know that the friends of Jesus will be graduating today. Friends of Jesus is a program in the children ministry where we intentionally disciple our children who have given their lives to Jesus. We are so intentional with the young generation for we know they are the next leaders in the several years that is coming. So they will be giving our presentation in Jesus' name. Amen. Media team kindly roll out the announcements. Jesus is the Him there is no other. Above him there is no other. 
Jesus is the way. Sitam Valley Road, where Christ is the answer. Good Sunday to you wherever you are. A very warm welcome to our fellowship today, the 15th of May 2022. It is a great honor to have you worship with us. We appreciate your support towards God's work through your tithes and offerings here in Valley Road. To worship through giving, use the basket next to you in the aisle. You can also use our Impesa Pay Bill number 933-939 and in the account indicate whether it is a tithe or an offering. If you wish to draw a check, please do so in favor of Christ is the Answer Ministries. You can also visit our office reception to swipe your card at the end of this service god bless you as you give thank you the women ministry will be having their monthly meeting on saturday 21st may 2022 at 9 a.m here at sitam valley road the speaker will be sister amy rubadiri on the topic inside out beauty are you a member of Seatum Valley Road? Do you possess the following skills? Sound engineering, videography, photography, graphic and motion design, website and social media management, script writing and voiceover, lighting, screen projection and presentation, electronics repair and maintenance. To volunteer in our media ministry, kindly visit the sound booth at the end of the service. We announced the bonds of marriage between Godfrey Ingutia Obadia and Martha Kabalika Amurega on 28th May 2022 at 12 noon at Sitam Valley Road. If anyone has a valid reason why these persons should not be lawfully wedded, kindly inform the church office in writing at least seven days before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. In case you need to communicate with us, please do so using any of the contacts below. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord again. In front of you, we have the Friends of Jesus season. Yes. Friends of Jesus season. Yes. In the first Friends of Jesus lesson, we learned about assurance of salvation and how Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And in the last lesson, we learned about the Holy Spirit is our helper. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. My name is Prince Ariel, and I want to share a little testimony how I got born again. It was 2020 before it, the corona started. It was January going to February. It was on a Sunday, and we were in our classes. And then our teacher asked whoever wants to get born again, please come forward. And then I... I just came forward, I was prayed for, and I felt a very, I felt a very, <clears throat> I felt a very powerful, powerful spirit in my body from heaven. <clears throat> Came in, coming inside my body. And then it reached at night. I was asked what we learned in, friend, in, uh, in the class. I said everything by detail, and they were all amazed, even myself. <laughs> so I want you guys to turn to the book of Psalms, chapter 23, if you have your Bible. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me into quiet 
pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right path as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest, darkest, I will not be afraid. Lord, for you are with me. Your rod stop and protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome, you welcome me as a, an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life as your house will be my home as long as I live. Thank you and have a blessed day.
Das, please. Amen. Amen. We now want to pray for the Friends of Jesus season eight. The church is on the right hand. Amen. We want to welcome our senior pastor to kindly commission these lovely boys and girls as they go to witness for Christ, introduce the speaker, and also bring in the worship team. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. And praise the Lord. I think we better remain standing because we were asked to remain standing. Because we want to make a prayer for these children. Oh, life can't begin better than this. I don't know how many of us, God, how many of you got saved when they were this young. And let me tell you, salvation is real. Even for these children. This past week I met a parent from Anglican Church. The, their children came for DVBS in one of our assemblies. And the mother brought the child this age, telling and told me, Pastor, this girl got saved in your church during DVBS. And she explained to them how she got saved. It is real. I really pray that parents will keep these Bibles for them. I pray they are their Bibles. So that as they go through school, they will be having the Bibles. The, you know there are Bibles, soft Bibles, but these ones also are good. I also have mine. It's going to keep some of these things because you are able to refer and to quickly remember what God taught you those days. And so we want to pray, we want to thank God for the parents of these children. I don't know if you can raise up your heart. I know you have been bringing them here Saturdays to do the word of God. Oh, the Lord bless you, parents. Please do whatever it takes to make sure that they remain in the faith. And God himself who has saved them will sustain them. So we want to make a prayer for them. All of us congregation, please just mention something. Just say something to God about these children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we are more than two or three gathered in your holy presence. And your word tells us that whatever we ask, it shall be done to us. Lord, as a congregation, we want to say thank you for these children. They are a gift to their parents, to their siblings, to their relatives, to the body of Christ, even to Sitam. We want to thank you for each of their lives, Lord. We thank you for saving them. Thank you for setting your Holy Spirit, oh God, to turn their hearts around. And we thank you that they can confess you, that they can start for you. Lord, we cry to you today in the name of Jesus that these ones, oh God, your word will dwell in their hearts. Lord, we pray that prayer will be their portion. Teach them how to pray every day. We pray that the fire of the Spirit will be their portion all the days of their lives. Lord, we pray that you shield and protect them from the things and the devices that destroy the enemy uses to destroy the youth and the children and the young people. Lord, I pray today in Jesus' name that you shield and secure each of these children in the name of Jesus. Lord, may you continue to speak to them where they were young, like Samuel of old, like Prophet Jeremiah of old, like David of old. May they get hold of your power right from when they are young at this age. Lord, speak to them, O oh God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. Continually, we pray in the name of Jesus. We pray that their careers will be straight in Jesus' name. That there will be no interferences from the enemy. We pray that this will be a powerhouse in their generation. A lighthouse in their generation. Make them a blessing to their parents, to their siblings. Make them a blessing in their schools. Make them a blessing, Lord, in this generation, in the body of Christ. And so, Lord, we want to commit these children to you, declaring that, Lord, these are men and women 
who are going to make maximum impact in their generation to the glory of your name. Then, Lord, we pray that you will continue to speak to them. Lord, we pray that you will continue to protect them. Lord, we pray that you will provide for everything they will need to the glory of your name. We pray that you give their parents wisdom and fill their parents with the Holy Spirit that they will be able to guide them in all truth. Blessed be your holy name. We declare that they are blessed. We declare that they are established in the house of the Lord. We declare that they will be the top, never the bottom. We declare that they are favored. Favored before their parents. Favored before their siblings. Favored before their, their relatives. Favored in the schools where they go. Favored, favored, favored. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so Lord, we commit them to you. They are yours. Sustain them. Love over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, friends of Jesus. The Lord bless you. You can have your seats. Thank you. We want to appreciate Pastor Lucy, who takes care of these children. And we also want to appreciate the teachers of these children. The Lord bless you. I know some of the teachers may not be here. They may be taking care of the other children. But for your effort coming here many, many days to ensure that these children are fed with the word of God and trading the things of God, we want to say thank you. And the Lord bless you. Amen. Our children are blessed. And the enemy can do nothing about it. Hallelujah. Listen, they may not be very intelligent in school, but they are still blessed. And they will be great in the Lord. And parents, we want you to declare every day, me included, that our children are blessed. In spite of how things seem to be, they are blessed. They are blessed. Even for those parents who are wondering if your children will be settled, they will. Very few people heard what I said. Those parents of my age are so troubled about their children getting married about their children getting jobs, about their children paying rent for themselves. You know, I talked to another elder the other day and explaining to them about how our children had. So they were, we are praying that they will get established. She laughed. Let me pass that. That's a natural process. <laughs> May the Lord remember you. May your daughters find good husbands. May your good sons find good wives. May our children find good jobs. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Those are the heritage of the servants of the Lord. We are in the month of politics. Okay, this year is the year of politics. Or Kenya, we do politics all the time. But this month, we are concentrating on radiating God's glory through leadership and politics. And uh, to speak to us today, or I started last Sunday, and uh, to speak to us today is Elder John Nganga. It's long since, uh, since John Nganga spoke to us. It is so good to see him back again. It's good to see him together with Rebecca. Praise the Lord. Amen. John Nganga is known for consistency in the things of God. I met him in high school when they were preaching, both of them, somewhere in, a, in a, you know, those, uh, those uh, youth camps in high school. Hey, you forgot the powerhouse and the preachers from Nairobi and how they looked like. Oh, my goodness. Spoke from the book of Matthew, chapter 24, in 1983. You know, and we, I mean, the college, he used to come to speak to us. So we have seen him do God things for so long. So when he stands to speak, he is authentic. He knows what he has worked with God. Amen. So after the worship team does a special, then we'll have 
Elder John Nganga come and speak to us, and I believe God is going to bless us. Amen? Shall I make a prayer for him? Our Father and our God, we are in your hands this morning. And we know you do not gather your people in vain. You brought us here physically for a purpose. We ask that you may speak to each one of us. Lord, we also pray for those who are watching online and those who will even watch later, that our, your spirit will be able to speak to us in a very personal way. Pray for our help, the Lord, as he brings your word, that you will anoint him once again. I want to pray, Father, that in this nation, in this season, you will help us to our hearts not to be anxious, but to trust in you because you are in total control. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I know it's not our custom, but it's like I've seen Dr. Muidi around. Is, are they the ones? Yeah, you know with these masks. They are good friends of ours. Thank you for coming to fellowship with us today. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Worship team. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, the song we're about to do is entitled Mercy. In the book of Exodus, chapter 34, God called Moses back up the mountain after the incident of the golden calf to receive, uh, to get the rewritten um, Ten Commandments. And when Moses was with the Lord up the mountain, God pronounced himself in verse 6. The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Perhaps you're here feeling that you've made all the wrong choices. Perhaps you're wondering how you are alive today, considering what you've done. But I want to encourage you that God's mercies are new every morning and they are available for you today. The blood of Jesus is available to cleanse us from our sins. We stand here because of the mercy of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Of what the mercy of God can do. If you knew me then, you'd believe me now. He turned my whole life upside down, took the old and he made it new. That's just what the mercy of God can do now i'm alive to tell the story how i've overcome it's his goodness and mercy and the power of the blood and i'm so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what i've done the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood oh, the power of his blood mm -hmm. I thought I The things I've said, the choices made that I regret, oh, I would still be lost, oh, but for the mercy of God, I am alive to tell the story how love overcomes. power of the blood. I am so glad that my freedom 
wasn't based on what I've done, but on the goodness and the mercy and the power. I am alive to tell the story how I've overcome. It is the goodness, it's His mercy and the power of the blood. I am so glad that my freedom wasn't based on what I've done. Oh, the goodness and mercy and the power of the blood. Oh, the power of His blood. For me, where my sin lay buried, now I stand redeemed by the power oh, of the cross. Say the cross meant for me that my Savior carried. Now I've been made free by the power of the Good to be back. Um, great to the Lord. I was just thinking, the first time I came to Valley Road, it was a small church, and I hadn't thought about it until now. It's 50 years. Because I was at Alliance, I was at Alliance during my A-level, 1972, and the teacher was take, used to take us to we went to Nobby Baptist. Then another Sunday we were brought to Valley Road. That is, that is 1972. Isn't that 50 years? After that, I came many times that you finally I set out in Valley Road. So it's been many, many years. But at the same time, it reminds me that, um, that uh, like, just like just as I said, in 1976, I remember going to speak in a forecast conference. I was then in the university. And one of the people who knew that I was going was a girl called Rebecca. 
today Dr. Rebecca Nganga, then Rebecca Chandi, and I still remember the, 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 the conference we spent together. After that, we did our dating in missions. You know, some of you have very little time for dates. For us, we decide we are going to preach in Karema Gaos. We didn't have a car. We get to a matatu. That means you three hours of dating, <laughs> preach the gospel, people get saved three hours back of dating. You, you, you normally go just for one hour, but, uh, and I can remember many missions we did together, and the idea was to look for a place in the matatu where we can sit next to each other, and the date can continue. Is it any wonder that even today I'm asking her to come and read the word of God? We've been married about 43 years, and I'm grateful to God that the girlfriend of 1976 is still by my side. Good morning. Actually, when they asked for visitors, I knew my husband would reprimand me. Uh, otherwise, in my ordinary, I was going to raise my heart. Uh, because first I got catch a shock. When they declared the corona and they said you stay home, I obeyed up to now. Uh, <laughs> I come out of my home to, uh, to preach. Like last Sunday, I was preaching somewhere, two services. So now the, the, the church, I mean the invitations have called me out of the church, only to find people are still meeting in church. So, but I haven't come to Valley Road. So I found cars everywhere. Every, and I'm saying, ah, yeah, you mean people went back? <laughs> so no wonder I am being treated here like a foreigner. They said, oh, yeah, because I am sure for, I'm so grateful to God to be back. I actually felt grateful to God for those who are courageous and they have come so that we worship together. I praise the Lord. I do have many memories of God's goodness and I continue to praise and to worship the Lord and to seek to grow in him and in his word. I'm praying. Um, um, I mean, of course, when we went online, we see many churches uh, so that uh, uh, to be uprooted out of there, uh, there, there's a church there, and they seem, it's also good. Uh, but we also need to meet Vesekari because it's also encouraged. Um, I now, I mean, since I preach, I know what it is to take a preacher's moment. Uh, you need every minute. So I know how much I disturb my husband um, by taking the time. <laughs> Uh, but uh, let me say that I, um, I will never be able to thank God enough for the saving grace that has reached me. I will never be able to thank God enough for the journey that he has taken me, including even the corona season. We are corona survivors uh, by the grace of God, and we continue to do so. I am one of the people that is praying deeply for revival. I'm praying for the spirit of God to come. I've kept listening and hearing the church talking about... Um, you know, them versus us, the politicians versus us. And I'm saying, no, Lord, why isn't it testimony of us being used of God in politics? If we are the priests of God, why is it that there is an area where Christ is not? So that I'm praying, Lord, revive us so that we become priests, so that church is not gathering in a building, so that church starts as we step out of there, so that wherever we go, Jesus Christ is magnified. And that we are not magnified men and women. When I was speaking yesterday, I was telling them, friends, I know pastors are acknowledged everywhere, in funerals and everything. Not teachers who taught pastors. We would also need to be acknowledged. And uh, the, the daughters of... Anyway, um, <laughs> Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of God dwell in you richly. My husband asked me to read Romans chapter 13. Verse 1 to 7. I told him, so, no, so no, sir, let the word of God dwell in us richly. Let me read the whole chapter. Uh, so, <laughs> prepare. You can't love God more than you love his word. If the word of God is not dwelling in you, the rest is social gathering. It is your self-motivation. It has nothing to do with the kingdom. The children did it here. That if you abide in me, your heart is abiding in you. Then that's how the fruit comes. It's not whether we feel or say we and whatever we say. Let's speak the word of God. Let's, um, let's read. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist 
have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right. But for those who do wrong, do you, uh, do you want to be free from fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and you be recommended. For the one in authority is God's servants for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid for rulers uh, do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is uh, necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others or has fulfilled the law, the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does, does not harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is already here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in carousing and darkness and in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in deception and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. May God bless his word. Um, although we are saying we have not been in church, this year I've been, I've been to, I don't know how many Sitam churches. I've, I've, I spent a weekend in Sitam Meru. They were having during around the, the time of Valentine, I spoke in the Valentine dinner plus leadership training on Saturday and on, the, on Sunday with them. Then I was in Sitam Kitengela. Then I was in Sitam Madriva. Then I was in Sitam Kikuyu. So I've been a roving Sitamite. So although we may not see us in Vary Road, we are in Sitam. Yesterday I was Sitam Boroboro. So we, we are roving everywhere, even if we are, you don't see us in Sitam Vary Road. My prayer is that the Lord will speak to us as we deal with this subject. I know the few minutes remaining, I may not cover it adequately, but I've written a book, two books, in order to deal with this involvement of Christian in society. One book is called the Christian professional leading in the marketplace. The other one came out recently. It's called Marketplace uh, Christianity Nehemiah Style. And if you are in, if you, are, you have access to Scripture Union Bookshop, just pick the book and a few of the things I will not say today, uh, it will be easy for you to just pick them from there. And I'm saying the few things I share, God will, will bring you to where you are you are able to learn something out of it. I'll give part one during the first service and part two during the second service because we have now become digital. You know, I was following, I've been, I, I, even when you don't see me here, I'm in church only, so I know it works. You know, sometimes I have sent some message to the deputy senior pastor about something that happened in church, so she knows I'm listening. Even if I'm not physically here, I've also sent some message to Justice. So I know you, if you are interested in the topic, you will go to YouTube and get part two. Is that possible? So I give part one here, and part two, you allow me to tell the others. You, you go to the... Now, and when you meet them, tell them they don't have part one. <laughs> so they also must go to YouTube. 
Now, I don't know about Facebook, but I know at least YouTube because I've used it. So that's really what we are talking about. So I'm talking about the role of the believer in politics. The role of the believer in politics. That role is what will help you to radiate God's glory through leadership and politics. And that's basically what the chapter we have been reading is really giving us about. When you talk about leadership, we are saying many things at the same time. And it's important to have in the mind that politics is actually an area of leadership. That when you are talking about your involvement in politics, we are talking about your involvement in leadership in society. And my prayer is that God in his wisdom will help you to come to where you listen to him. So, what is your role in leadership in society? But ask, ask it differently. What do we talk about? When you say you are talking about leadership, what is leadership? It is leading people. And when you say the word leader, you mean the one being followed. Are we together? You, you are a leader if anybody is following. That means if you call yourself a leader and nobody is following, please accept you are taking a walk. Because the truth is, you are not a leader. Unless somebody is. But that's what makes leadership so difficult. It's not my real subject today. Because in leadership, power is with the follower. Because you go, you expect people to follow, you look back, nobody is. You know, the whole idea about leading is not like management. Because in management, you have subordinates. They fail to do what you want at their own risk. But leading is going ahead, expecting some people will follow. And they might not follow. Because power is not with the leader. Power is with the follower. That's really what you need to understand. But defined that way, leadership then is inference. I've written many books on leadership. But what my definition of leadership is influencing. In other words, you have influenced somebody to the extent that he can willingly follow you. So influencing people is what leadership is all about. But some people actually assume that you can command people. Commanding people is not leadership. It may be management, but not leadership. And I think that will be an important thing. But maybe you also can talk about guiding people. Guiding people as part of uh, what leadership is all about. John Maxwell says in the 21st Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he sums up by saying leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. This moves beyond the position of defining the leader to looking at the ability of the leader to influence others, both those who would consider themselves followers and those who consider um, who are outside that circle. Indirectly, it also builds in leadership character scenes without maintaining integrity and trustworthiness. The capability to influence will disappear. In other words, competence, the ability of someone will make you follow him. But soon you will discover he is fake. And you will discover you are no longer following him. Are we together? It's very important to understand. Some fathers are leaders. Others are simply fathers. Because you see, your child knows you. You can't hide. Especially by the time they get to teenage, they know even what happens inside the bedroom. Now, you need to understand, at that time they know the truth, isn't it? And if they don't see your character consistent with what you are saying they soon decide not to follow you. So for, for you to be a leader in your own home, it's not enough to have a title. In fact, when you are somebody, don't you know I'm your father? It just means he lost it. <laughs> because the reason why you're saying, he is now using authority. That's now that father has become a manager, not a leader. Hey, don't you know I'm your mother? Now I know who you are. Huh? You are a manager. Now it's very important to understand clearly that if we are going to be leaders, and I'm talking about even those of us who are in this meeting and are in politics, you need to understand power is with the follower. You know, a definition of leading I would agree with is inspiring, willing followers. That's the leader doing it. Inspiring, willing followers to accomplish a cause that is beneficial and significant to the whole group. In other words, the leader is not leading for his own benefits. The leader is leading for the people's 
benefit. That's why we are following you because we know it's no longer about you. It's about us. And that will be very important. You know the truth of the matter is you are born to influence your generation. That's what David was told. So you need to understand that every Christian is a leader or rather expected to be a leader. He's supposed to be a leader of a generation. But I want to say a few things about leading in politics. And I'm giving Christian primary assumptions about politics that are very important for us to. The first one, which we need to understand if we want to be leading in the political arena. Opinion is not fact. Until you understand that, politics becomes a very dirty game. Because opinion is not fact. You need to understand that I'm allowed to have an opinion. The trouble is a lot of us assume that the opinion is a fact. You know, I have a right to my opinion, but I should not assume it's a fact. So if you, assume, if you know that opinion is okay, then the other person's opinion becomes okay. Because, because you don't have to agree with my opinion. There are certain facts, like Jesus was born, Jesus died, Jesus rose again. That's not an opinion. That is a fact and can be established historically. But when they start saying that uh, PNU is better than ODM, that is an opinion. Are we together? Now, and have a right to say ODM is good as long as I know it is an opinion. So when the pastor refuses, we will still remain friends. Because it's just a difference of opinion. And unfortunately, a lot of politicians do not want us to know that these are opinions. They talk like they are facts. And some of us are foolish enough to agree with them. When what they are giving is opinions. And they, please, don't tell them they are wrong. They have a right to their, but it is accurate their opinion. That's very important. You know, a lot of politics we play is in something called democracy. And you know, democracy is a very interesting thing. It's one of the, a very bad form of government, democracy. Because you see, democracy by definition divides a nation. If you are not divided, you don't have democracy. Democracy insists you must divide. It's not what multipartism is all about. And we fought very hard to remove one party. Am I right? So that we have, a pro we have a right to differ. Now, we differ. Again, we are praying, God, we, we, we are differing. Now, you, <laughs> you need to understand it is, you cannot be in democracy and not differ. The trouble with Kenya is they assume there is something wrong with differing. I came to give you God's message. It's okay to have a difference in opinion. Am I communicating? And when you differ in opinion, you are still going to heaven. With your differing opinions. Am I communicating? Very, very important for you to understand. And the trouble is, that it's only the Christians who will help others to understand that. Please sell your idea to me, but as long as you remember it is an opinion. That's very, very important. Thus, please be aware, two genuine Christians can differ in political opinion, and it is okay. You know, sometime back in this church, one of the political times, we prayed, we prayed, but Kumbe, some people are praying, a certain party wins. But we are praying, but the understanding is that God knows the party that must win is this one. Then God failed. But their party never won. And a prayer was called in this church. A prayer meeting was called in this church after the elections. And then some people who were obviously from the winning party came for the prayers. Somebody reading the prayers, a pastor in this church, told them, and you, what are you coming to do? This prayer is for us to mourn. You are winning. What are you doing here? Now, <laughs> you know, it sounds stranger than fiction because I'm talking about Valley Road. It was not another system. It is in Valley Road. That's how demonic some ideas can be. Where you start thinking that you are, the opinion, your opinion must be everybody's opinion. To the extent that you think it is God's. Do you hear people saying God must be on our side? God can never be on your side. 
it is you to be on God? Am I communicating? If God, if God is to be on your side, he ceases to be God. You lead him. He is a follower. But God is God. You can only be on his side. That's what I came to share with you. That I have no problem with whoever wins. If my, the one I support wins, thank God. If the other one wins, thank God. Because I know it was only an opinion. And it's very important to understand that. We like people both for competence and values. I told you democracy is a very bad form of government. And I don't know, that's not my subject. You have not said, so you are likely to ask me, then why, how come we are in democracy for most of the world and we are encouraging democracy? I'll tell you why. Would you like to know the answer? Because all the other forms are worse. Now, you understand now why? <laughs> democracy is a bad form of government, but the others are worse. Just try dictatorship and you'll see what we are, what we are talking about. So it's important to understand. So one of the other problems of democracy is that whoever is elected assumes he is the best. But you see, democracy, if you have studied it, it never promises to give you the best person. It promises to give you the most popular. If he's a crook and he is popular, he will be elected. After election, he thinks he was elected because he is the best. Nobody intended to elect the best. They were electing their opinion. Am I communicating? So you need to understand clearly. And you know, even an MP will be saying, you know, I'm the best in <laughs> whatever your constituency. Surely, use another method. If you want to know that, uh, if you want to know that democracy does not choose the best, just go to, to courts and see the judge listen to 10 witnesses giving their story. Then two witnesses on the other side. Then he says the one that had only two witnesses has won. And he says, wait a minute, there are 10 against and he says, judgment is based on evidence, not popularity. Am I communicating? If you want to know truth, you don't verify it by, democ by democracy. You look for evidence. Am I communicating? And that's what you need to understand. The person elected will not be the best. They will be the most. And that's not accidental. It is the intention of democracy. That you not be ruled by the best. You should be ruled by who you like. If you like a crook, Please, you have the freedom in democracy to elect a crook. So whoever is elected, and I'm talking to you who is here standing, be aware that when he elects you, you don't become the best. If you are not the best earlier, even after ninth, you'll still not be the best. Democracy does not hope to actually change you. You know, though you should not serve in some places like breweries, I, want, I still intend to encourage you to serve in politics. Why? Because politics of itself is not a data game. Just like you normally say about money. And people keep saying money oh, is the root of all evil. That's not scripture. Scripture says the root of all evil is not money. It is love money. In the same way, politics is not dirty. It's the people that are dirty. If you are holy and you are elected in politics, you continue being? Because holiness is not circumstantial. Holiness is inside your heart. And holiness moves wherever you, you move. And that will be something that is very important. That, um, that when you go into politics, you can go with your holiness. You know, what we are saying is, according to, to understanding of scriptures, no matter who wins the election, Jesus will still be on the throne. It really does not matter. He have, we have had governments who are crooked. In fact, I was, telling, I was telling somebody yesterday, because my wife went to Makerere. In our days, we, there was the University of East Africa. So when you finish A-level, you are posted either to Makerere, Dar es Salaam, or Nairobi until the East African community broke in 1977. So my wife was the last people, Kenyans, in Makerere. That's a story for another day. But, um, but you need to understand that as we talk about this, uh, this idea of, of people coming together, um, and, the, and, the, and we are split into three nations, the reason that it happened was because of a guy called Idi Amin. He really gave my wife a rough time, you know, because he was in a Makerere during Idi Amin eras. And actually, the reason why they were brought back to Kenya is because Jomo Kenyatta now felt all Kenyans may be dead. 
so they were returned back to, to Kenya, and no wonder I got a wife. But that, <laughs> that's not a joke, it's truth. I got a wife by presidential decree. <laughs> Without Jomo Kenyatta ordering all Kenyans back to, Nau to Nairobi, and therefore she came to the University of Nairobi just before I finished, I would never have met her, most likely. Now you understand. But what I want you to understand is that Uganda in those 1970s was so bad, you can't imagine that Idi Amin overthrew the government in 1971. By 79, he was out. There was no Idi Amin in the 60s, no Idi Amin in the 80s. But that period, he made hell of Uganda. So I can tell you clearly, the interesting thing is, even Idi Amin caused the nation of Uganda to become a praying nation. They were able to move to every, they were thrown out of the country to everywhere. I still remember going to, going for a, for a course in, in London, and I was going, I was, I was visiting somebody around Cambridge, and I bumped into somebody who looked like an African. He said, yeah, my Ugandan. Oh, we came, my parents came here, we settled. They settled in many countries. You need to understand that sometimes God will allow, and I pray he doesn't, will allow somebody who is a crooked guy in order to teach us something. We must pray he doesn't, but he can. <laughs> I'm not communicating. But you need to understand, whoever wins, God can control him. He controlled it, I mean, and when time was up, he removed him. Nobody is above God. So don't sit there thinking, ah, yeah, if so and so is, what will happen? He'll be under God. It's Pastor White who to say, the devil is God's devil. What did he mean? The devil can be turned around by God, whichever direction the devil, God wants. You know, a lot of us think that the devil and God are fighting. They can't fight. They are not on the same weight class in boxing. You know, in boxing, featherweight and heavyweight don't, are not allowed by the referee to fight. Am I right? So God is not in the weight of the... They can never be allowed in the same boxing ring. You need to understand the devil and God never fight. So it means that even the devil himself becomes the president of Kenya. God can still control him. So we shouldn't be sitting there. <laughs> My partner must win. If the other one, even if the other one won, your God will still be God. And in control of this country. Am I communicating? That's what you need to understand. Because part of the reason why we kill each other before, during, or after elections is because, ah, if they take over, now they will take over and God will control them. And if they don't agree to God's control, they will be taken out of the line. Am I communicating? And it's very, very important to understand that. You know, we need to understand that we represent the creator, not a presidential candidate if we go into politics. Very important to understand. You cannot be a Christian and talk like your party says, like your president says. You only talk as the president says in as long as in agreement with God. Because to become a Christian means to be under God's control. Am I communicating? So you don't, you don't, you don't have your party in party politics. Your party saying something that's unbiblical and you start repeating it. So that you are in good books with your party. That tells you you have backslidden. Am I communicating? Your party leader needs to be aware that you are subject to a higher power. And as long as he's in line with the higher power, you are with him. And we are not original. Paul said, don't follow me when I stop following Christ. If Paul of all people gave us freedom not to follow him, who is his president or party leader who hopes I can follow him without thinking. I have donated him my brain. It's not biblical. If you're a Christian, either as a party, a party representative, or even simply as a citizen, you must never surrender your brain to somebody else. Because your brain belongs. The command is, have the mind that was in Christ, Jesus. And it will be important to understand that, even if you are going to politics. You only be a part of your party in as long as your party is in line with God. When it differs, there will be a problem. You know, I know we are really looking forward to good elections. But let me tell you, 
Whoever wins, it will still be earth. And as long as earth, it will never compare to heaven. Am I communicating? You want a better nation, but heaven is really our destination. Understand you are passing through here, isn't it? You know, if you are, you are visiting Cameroon, they are, having, they are having some civil war type. If you are going to Cameroon and you are there for three weeks, you will also be uncomfortable, but you know three weeks you are coming back to Kenya. Am I right? Similarly, we are in this world temporarily. Our home is heaven. We must not enter into politics like it's a destination. It's only a means through which we pass on our way to heaven. Just let me read for you First John chapter 2, verse 17. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. That's really what you need to have at the back of your mind, even as we talk about politics and your involvement. I thought I needed to, to give right at the introduction that which is important. But let me go back to Acts 13, which I quoted earlier. Acts 13, verse 36. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. He was buried with his ancestors, and his body decayed. What are we, what are we learning? Ye, where the name David appears, please place yours. Now, when Nganga had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep. That means the guy died. He was buried, that means he went six feet under, with his ancestors. And his body, by the way, that's what is true about your body. One of these days it will decay. That's not African theology. That's biblical theology. That's why I always get embarrassed when I see people in this pulpit here talking to the dead body. As if we have not been told what happens to the dead body. Have you seen it written there? It, what does it happen to it? Decays. That body, which is here maybe two weeks after the death, is too late. You know, some people even talk about they are escorting so and so. You are too late. The guy left two weeks ago. <laughs> Barrio is not an escort, except if you are a non Christian. Am I communicating? It's a language we must stop. Are we together? You cannot. Oh, we are giving him, we are giving him last respects. You are too late. <laughs> the respect, the respect was, was to be given before the guy died. But he died two weeks. And you are from Western Kenya one month ago. It's very important to understand. <laughs> very important to understand. The Bible is telling us, once we are dead, we are properly dead. I've written a book on secret of contentment. One chapter says, until you understand death, you will never enjoy living. You need to understand that one of these days you are off the screen. Once you are off the screen, there is nothing you cannot have impact on us. And we cannot have impact. That's when we will pray for a dead person. It's called mouth exercise. <laughs> because the word of God is clear. It's appointed that the man wants to die after that. You are too late. The guy is already being judged. Now, it's very important to understand here, David, David died. Before he died. Is what matters for us this morning. David was a politician. Do you remember? He was never a priest. He was a politician. But as a politician, he is described as serving God's purpose. And I want you therefore to understand that politicians, just like we read in the book of Romans, politicians are serving God's purpose. Because David and President Kibake both died having served God. Am I communicating? Of course, sometimes we want to say pastors are the ones who serve the Lord. But here, just listen to, listen to this. This guy is not a pastor, but he is serving God. So I want you to understand clearly, if God has called you to politics, you are in God's service. You know, when I wrote my book, The, um, uh, the Christian Professional Leading in the Marketplace, I wrote it to answer the question. Because people have been preaching for the last, I left university about 45 years ago, and I've always been preaching. So everybody comes once and says, Brother Nganga, when are you becoming a pastor? After some time, when, Nganga, when are you becoming a pastor? Because they believe you, you preach, you must be. Because you see, 
preach pastors are the ones who serve. So I wrote the book to answer them, a whole book, just to answer people who, th <laughs> who think that I should become. If you want to know the answer, read the book. But it's based on this verse. To tell you, you can serve the Lord wherever, as long as you are doing it because God has called you. He's an engineer, he's a politician. So I want us in this in today's service to understand clearly. Don't look at politicians like they are in a, in a trade less worth than you are. Am I communicating? So you need to understand the same way engineers are not better than doctors, and doctors are not better than, than teachers. Okay, my wife is a teacher, so she might think they are better, but the truth is, <laughs> teachers teach doctors, then doctors treat teachers. Am I communicating? All, all of us are in God's service. That includes politicians. Because in politics, we are serving God through politics. You know, one of the things that's embarrassing is that idea of serving God. It becomes very complicated because people think that you only serve the Lord if you are preaching. I still remember when I was working for Shell as a Shell manager, interviewing some people. One was an accountant. And uh, the accountant, I saw from the CV, the HR invited me to be in the panel, and I saw in the CV that she was a Christian. You know, the, you look at the CV, you can see she was a Bible study leader, whatever. So during one of the most important questions in interviews is checking somebody's integrity. So I, I said, uh, I asked the, the accountant, oh, I can see you are a believer. Yes, I am, sir. Now, so if you joined Shell, how will your Christianity affect Shell? You know what the answer was? Not in any way. My Christianity is private. It will not affect anybody. <laughs> the, the other managers looked at me. I was so embarrassed. I felt like I'm going under the table. Because I've been telling them about the importance of Christianity. And that we need everybody to be saved. Then this one, with a CV of being a Bible study, says becoming a Christian is of no impact. Of course, he was desperate for a job. That I agree. But he was denying Christ. You think Peter is the only one who denied Christ? <laughs> That's the trouble of politicians. When they realize that their Christianity is going to jeopardize their upward mobility, they... They don't, they don't deny that they are Christians, but they say, I'm not that type of a Christian. What type are you? It's very important to understand. <laughs> very important to understand that even as you go into engineering, even as you go into being a doctor, you must treat people and pray for them. Am I communicating? Because you know talk, doctors heal or doctors treat only God? Heals. As an accountant, a guy is coming, and he is coming with a voucher. You know very well he might misuse the money you are paying him. There is one word or two you can throw. So that you are paid a salary to pay the voucher, you are free of charge helping them to use the money well. Am I communicating? That's what we are talking about. And that's why I wrote the two books, the one uh, Marketplace Christianity and Hema Style, and uh, the Christian Professional. I'm writing them to get you to understand that whatever your professional area, God has sent you there to do two jobs. One is the official day job. The other one is a job God has placed you there for. God did not just give you a job for nothing. There's a reason. There's something called special branch. I, I think it has a new name these days. But when you're at the university, we used to hear some people are in special branch. They are students, but they're in special branch. What are special branch? These are police without uniform to collect intelligence. Ever heard of them? Some of them are sitting next to you, but don't look around. Because <laughs> I'm told, in a special branch, you, are, you actually get a job. You apply for a job, you are employed exactly like an accountant, like any other. You get a salary as an accountant, but the evening you are writing intelligence reports. And you are getting a second salary. And nobody must ever know about your other job. You only talk about the the one you are paid for. That's exactly how every Christian is supposed to be. Every Christian is a special branch agent with reports to heaven. And that's why you need to ask yourself, maybe on earth you are getting one promotion after the other. That's report one. What about report two in heaven? Are you representing God all 
not. So even you go to politics, there will be two reports. One report is the one that will make you re-elected by, by, your, by your constituents. But the other one is in heaven. Am I communicating? So the question will be, how is the heaven one? As you become a politician, how is the heaven one? And my prayer is that God will, as I finish, I want to read Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 13. And I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to finish. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trumped underfoot. Are you getting it? It is not the it's not just the accountant or the pastor. All of us have recribed as salt. And you say, but you need no politics. There are very few Christians. Salt is never required in quantity. Imagine your wife placing salt in your food. In you know, you know, to, are you going to eat that food? So we are very few Christians. You go to politics and you'll be one in a hundred. But that is enough for to sort the food. Am I communicating? You have no business saying, you know, brother, you don't understand. In my industry, they are evil. I agree, but you are. Am I communicating? And there are three jobs in sort. One is to be a preservative. Things would have gone worse if it were not for you. The other one is to bring out taste. There would be no taste except for, and I could go and I've run out of time. But it's important to understand as a politician, you are going to politics to be the sort. That way, politics will be done differently. Not by everybody, but by you. And once it's done, everyone will say, hey, yeah, you mean, you know, you can be a Christian. I still remember trying to witness to a policeman. And he said, young man, you don't understand. It is difficult, impossible for a policeman to be a Christian. I told him, in Saudi B, there is brother Zero, I think he was called Zero, who was born again and was my friend. I said, go to Saudi B police station. And you'll find a man of God who is a policeman. That was the end of the discussion. We need to be that policeman. We need to be that matato driver. We need to be that politician who is going to embarrass everybody on the day of judgment. When they claim it is the politics, it is the, the industry, it is, and then they are told, what about Nganga? What about Atieno, who stood for me in that industry? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, these are easy words to say, but not easy to practice without your help. Just before I finish, is there somebody saying, Brother Nganga, as you pray, remember me. The Lord is speaking to me about my involvement in politics or my involvement elsewhere, and I know I have not been a good representative. I want God to help me to be the representative he wants me to be. Would you like to put up your hand as showing to God that you truly want his touch? Just put up high enough. Once I, the Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you upstairs. You are telling God, yes, that was my message. May I move out to this church, whether it's politics or elsewhere, to go to be your representative, to be the sword that will change my current evil circumstances. Lord Jesus, you can see the hands of all these people. I pray that each one of them will feel your touch. Number one, to be forgiven for the past. Number two, to get your power. Number three, to move out to be the salt and the light of the earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder John. Let's appreciate him again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. You know, as we pray God to guide us on what to be preached each month, this Sunday, when it is done, we are amazed at how God is able to guide us through his spirit. Totally amazed. And I'm sure as we now 
go to face what is around us as far as politics are concerned and politicians and political parties, we will do it with understanding and with some peace of mind, knowing that God is in control. Amen. God is in control. God is in control. And so you can campaign with all your strength for your candidate. Isn't it? Without shame. You can tell as many people as possible to, to know to campaign for your candidates except the pastors and the elders as we, we pray. We pray because we are for all of us. We are for all of us. Because we believe at the end of the day, God will give us our leaders. Our leaders, not their minis, but good leaders. Amen. We want to bring this service to a close as we make a prayer before the Lord for each one of us that God will help us to be the salt. We can go back to our company saying, I'm the salt. We can go back to our places of work saying, I am the salt. I will preserve someone. I will make one someone's life to be of value again. I pray that is your prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Let's also pray for our politicians that God will make them the salt. That God will preserve them. Hallelujah. I pray and I hope you are making that prayer in your heart this morning. We also want to pray that our report in heaven will be a good report. People may not have, we may not have good reports around here because of people's opinions. But we pray that God will help our report to be good up there. That one day God will say, well done, good and faithful servant. In spite of how difficult it, had be, it, it might have been, oh Lord our God, we thank you for speaking to us this morning. Each one of us, we surrender to you, Lord where we have made mistakes in the past by pushing our opinions like it's your truth. Forgive us. Lord, forgive us. We want to ask that from now on we will walk, we will serve you with understanding that wherever we are, you are placed us there for a purpose. That your name may be glorified and that your kingdom may come in the lives of your people. Oh God, that is our cry. And Lord, we want to take this moment to pray for those among us who are politicians, our relatives, our friends. Lord, we commit them to you. They are your servants. May you provide the resources they need. May you provide the favor that they need. And Lord, we pray that you will give them success. Thank you, Lord. We surrender this country to you. We pray that our hearts will not be troubled, but we will put our trust in you because you are in control of this nation. Once again, we say thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for sending your servant to speak to us today. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. The first time visitors will go through that door where we have that lady who is in blue, checked blue, and we will have, uh, did we have visitors? No, all of us, we can't have all that. The tea is not enough. <laughs> the tea is not enough. But if you have been, you've not been here for, for, for a long time, Except, of course, <laughs> except John and, and Rebecca, you can actually go and have a cup of tea. Yeah, if you just came back to church the other day, please feel free, you'll be welcome. In case you need prayer, 
those who have gotten saved or in case you want to get saved, please come. Our counselors are here. Our pastors are here. We are going to pray together. Amen? Amen? And now, can we say the grace of the Lord together? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 We had a great time of revival here this past week and God is bringing revival. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. God bless you. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Help me sing. I've got my mind made up. Yeah. And I won't turn back. Cause, Cause I want to see my Jesus yeah. someday. Got my mind. I got my mind made up. Mm. And I won't turn back. Yeah. Cause I want to see my Jesus someday. Go God's way the rest of my life. 
Oh, no. 